AEFW. What does AEFW mean? In this episode of Eradicating Flatworms, I will focus on six steps that have helped me through the process to eradicate flatworms in my reef aquarium. Identify Percentage of flatworms Formulate plan Livestock Stick with plan and observe, share your outcome. I feel that when armed with these six steps, not only will you have a better understanding of how these pests are introduced into a system and thrive, you too can overcome and eradicate flatworms. How does one unknowingly introduce flatworms into their system? Flatworms themselves are just about invisible to the untrained eye. Usually unless you have had them before, or have seen them in person, they camouflage themselves so well they can only be identified by their bite marks. What can be seen are the eggs they lay around the base of the coral, cleverly hidden from natural predators. In many cases, the coral has to be removed from the system and closely examined by a magnifying glass. Understanding how difficult they are to spot, it's easy to introduce them into your system, even after taking every known precaution. It's a touchy subject throughout the reefing community, and if you have never had them, one would not go out of their way to find out more, so not many research the subject in depth. Bite marks can also come from the red bug, which can be unknowingly introduced into a system the exact same way. The bite patterns are somewhat similar, but not quite the same. Not exactly sure what type of pest you have? Identify. Identify if they are in fact flatworms and not red bugs, or any other predator that feasts on Acropora. Some fish are also very well known to nibble on Acropora. Usually this happens when fish are unknowingly not well fed, the specific diet to that particular fish is not met, or displaying signs of stress. Flatworm bites can be definitively identified by looking for small circles missing from the skin of Acropora. The flatworm itself is not translucent. Rather, it camouflages itself by eating the coral skin and then blends into the coral it's feasting on from the eaten skin showing through the body of the flatworm. Red bugs, on the other hand, can be seen easier than flatworms. Nowadays, the phone in your pocket can take extremely focused pictures, and by simply snapping a shot, you can identify whether or not you have flatworms or red bugs. If you have red bugs, there are tons of forums and videos dedicated to them. Unfortunately, this video will be focused on flatworms only. Fortunately, there are remedies for both. Percentage of flatworms. If you have successfully identified that you have flatworms, trust me, I sympathize with you. The good news is, is that these creatures can be beaten, but time is of the essence as they reproduce very quickly, 21 days to be exact. If you have Acropora, you have already identified the telltale bite marks or the eggs. Or maybe you don't have Acropora, but have identified strange, worm-like creatures on your LPS or your glass. Either way, you have made it to this video, so now you have to identify the percentage of flatworms. Formulate plan. How 
How far are you willing to go? I know this is a horrible question, but there is a reason I ask this. I have heard of people who have identified they did in fact have flatworms and basically had a flash sale of all their coral and equipment. And then in a few weeks, the inevitable. New owners of the coral and equipment are faced with the hard fact that now they have flatworms. I've also seen experienced reefer lose the battle just because they couldn't give the time it took to rid their tank of flatworms. Kids, job, life, etc. These creatures are fully capable of completely destroying a reef aquarium. If you are not on top of it at the first sight of them, the inevitable gains that much more strength. I used to sell and trade around 5 corals per month. After the first bite mark I noticed, that came to an immediate halt. And that same day, I contacted all of the people I sold or traded to immediately after. Luckily the flatworms did not make it into their aquariums. In a nutshell, that is how serious this is. That is why I ask, how far are you willing to go? Fortunately, there are a few methods to rid your tank of these buggers. If you have an extreme amount of flatworms, use flatworm exit. You have to do frequent water changes, and it's a good idea to use carbon as well. If you have only a few, or a moderate amount, you can use flatworm stop and dip your corals in flatworm exit bi-weekly. Livestock What do you currently have, and is it capable of eating or killing flatworms? It's a good idea to have something in the tank besides supplements to remove flatworms. The best action that could be taking place instead of dosing chemicals is natural predation. The six-line wrasse and a few other fish including the yellow wrasse and spotted mandarin are known to eat flatworms. The blue velvet nudibranch is also known to eat flatworms, but after it eats them all, it could starve to death once the tank is ridden of flatworms. After learning our lesson on introducing anything into our reef aquarium without first quarantining, again, time is of the essence. My six line is a great addition to my reef. If you plan to pick one up for Peko or PetSmart, call them and ask when the fish will be in stock. I got my six line before they introduce it into their water, so I basically got the fish directly from the supplier, which saved me some time on the quarantining process. I feed my fish twice a day and usually skip weekends. I know some of you are not going to like what I have to say next, but just hear me out. The fish in our aquarium are used to your feeding schedule. By removing that feeding schedule, they have to rely on food that is available in the aquarium. Instead of the food you feed, they feed on pods, algae, and inevitably flatworms. I don't want to use the word starve, but simply try feeding less. Stick with plan and observe. If you decide you need to add a six line, dose flatworm stop daily, dip your corals in flatworm exit by weekly, perform 5% water changes daily, change filter socks every other day, feed your fish less, whatever your plan is, stick with it and observe. I know it's extremely hard to fight the urge, but try not to make in-the-moment drastic changes. If something does go wrong, adjust accordingly and test often. When flatworms die, they leave a form of poison behind, so frequent water changes and possibly adding carbon should not be whether they fit into your schedule, they are mandatory. One day I noticed my skimmer going crazy just out of the blue, no idea why. But after realizing what my Chromis was munching on and the cloud of debris in the water column, it was a sudden die-off of flatworms. Try to always have fresh salt water ready to go in case something does look out of the ordinary. Just remember, with everything in this hobby, slow and steady wins the race. Absolutely nothing good happens fast. And if you find the time, document your journey as it comes in very handy if something goes wrong, or hopefully right. Share your outcome.
Remember when I said, if you find the time, document your journey, as it comes in very handy if something goes wrong or hopefully right? In the beginning stages of this nightmare, I did so much research it's unfathomable to describe. And what I found the most is people describing of how they have flatworms and their personal process of how they want to get rid of them. And then just as dramatic as the first video, boom, there is no follow-up. It just ends. Sometimes there are videos after, sometimes not. Did they beat flatworms? Did they lose? Did they give up? What happened? This is how our prospectively little hobby evolves by sharing our experience with others and growing from it ourselves. You must have done so much research before setting up your tank, right? That was someone somewhere sharing their personal experience so that reefers like yourself could thrive. There are so many different social platforms readily available to share your journey of wealth of knowledge. If you are watching this now and don't think your story will get heard, share your experience in the comments below and share this video with others that are having the same issues. If you have a question or comment for me, I try and read every comment and answer questions to the best of my ability. If you are a coral seller and you know you have flatworms and are still selling coral just trying to make a quick buck, seriously, stop. You should know better. However your journey goes, I sincerely wish you all the luck I can possibly give. These creatures are a true nightmare. I am only six weeks in, so I have a way to go, but I can already see an improvement. I will add more follow-up videos of my progress, so please subscribe to stay informed.